Yo, look, if you wanna know how to build an attractive character for your personal brand, you are in the right space, right spot, right time, everything, stay tuned. I'm getting ready to show you exactly how to do that right now. Zachary Babcock here. I spent over five years of my life in prison turned underdog entrepreneur and the Prove Em Wrong Prodigy, top 200 iTunes podcast host. What is up? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if this is your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell notifications so you don't miss anything. If you want the best tips on how to turbocharge your business with lead generation and customer acquisition. With that being said, we're getting right to dive into, man, I'm gonna show you exactly how to build an attractive character for your personal brand that it's going to build rapport for your audience is going to leave them on like a cliffhanger like oh my god i gotta follow this guy what is he doing next or or gal um it's going to really make you interesting because you might notice you might be in a position where you've built up an email list or built up added a bunch of people on a social media or whatnot but your engagement is is shit it's so low, it's not performing, it's not up to par. You might not be getting open e emails, you, you know? And the reason why is because you haven't built an attractive character with your personal brand. So with all that being said, let's head to the slide deck so I can show you exactly how to do this. This is how you build an attractive character for your personal brand. This is character building. Now this is a concept, the actual attractive character is a concept that I learned from Russell Brunson from his book, Dot Com Secrets. This is an actual image I pulled from the book. Uh, it's really genius how he mapped it out and laid out the concepts. Now there's three key components of an attractive character, and inside of each one of those key three key components are a bunch of other moving pieces inside of them. So an attractive character, though, you need an attractive character for your personal brand. It has to be compelling to your audience. If you notice, like you you got an email list, but you're just not making any sales, or you got like a bunch of friends on Facebook and nobody's engaging with your content, it's probably be, probably because you haven't built in an attractive character. Now, what I mean by attractive character? So let's look at Subway, for instance. Uh, they had this guy Jared on. He was an attractive character for them before they brought on Jared. Um, you know, nobody really you know associated anything special with Subway but when they brought this guy on that lost a bunch of weight from eating their Subways and went from like I don't know what it was like a, a morbidly obese to you know the skinny skinny nerdy white guy um, it, it built an attractive character and before he you know it was very successful for him their sales went through the roof until he made some stupid dumb poor decisions and um, and then got himself in a bunch of trouble and then he no longer was the face of that franchise no longer was the the, the attractive character for Subway and and their sales plummeted after uh, after after he left. That's the power of having an attractive character. That's the power of personal branding. So let's get into um, these uh, these co core components of your attractive character. Now, first is the backstory and your elements. Let's dive first into the elements. You need a backstory. What I mean by backstory? So with me, my backstory is I was in prison. Did over five years of my life in prison. I decided to turn my life around uh, when I missed the birth of my twin boys. When I came out as an underdog entrepreneur, with all the odds stacked against me, people were saying it was just a matter of time before I went back to prison that I would never make it in business. And I proved them wrong. And that's uh, you know the story in a nutshell. That's actually a picture of me the day, the moment I got out of prison the last time, coming home on fire, ready to turn it up. So that's your backstory. You got to have a compelling backstory. Uh, you don't have to go to prison to have a cool backstory. It, it, you have to have something that is compelling. That um, it, it might be you grew up and and your dad uh, was never around, or your dad um, you know was abusive towards you, or it might have been uh, that you grew up with the best parents in the world and always got straight A's, and then you hit the, you know the real world and, and life started punching you in the face. Whatever it is, you know, pull out that backstory. Uh, next, we're gonna move on to parables. Now, all good teachers speak in parables, and the, and they speak in stories, like Jesus Christ, for example. If you read the Bible. Um, he always spoke in parables. He told stories. And when he would tell these stories, people would understand these stories, the, the concepts better. That's what all good teachers do. You explain a concept and then you tell a story. Like Jesus would tell his disciples, for instance, uh, a story. Uh, like you could, uh, like you can, you could feed a man a uh, fish. Like he'd speak in parables. You could feed a man, you could give a man a fish and feed him for a day, or you can teach a man a fish and feed and uh, feed him for a lifetime. That's a parable. Um, parables and stories are the key way to uh, really make concepts stick and to teach and become a great teacher. Um, next, we're going to move on to character flaws. 
So y- you don't want to be that person that's like perfect and has no character flaws. That's for one, it's unattractive. It's not interesting, and it it's um it, it makes you just it makes you seem fake, honestly. Um, so look look at these two characters right here, Superman and Batman. Um, you, you notice that. Uh, Superman, in my opinion, maybe not in everybody's opinion, but my opinion, he's kind of boring. You know, he's, he, he's nothing can kill him. I mean, he's got kryptonite, whatever. That's what makes it cool as soon as you introduce the, the kryptonite, something that can actually hurt him. But Batman, on the other hand, Batman's awesome. Batman, uh, the reason why is because he's a badass, but he he is immortal. He's human, and he has a character flaw. He could be beat, and uh, that makes it more compelling. You know, if you put yourself off like you're the uh, guru on the mountain, right, that has all the answers, nobody likes that. Everybody runs away from that. But if you come down off the mountain and show your character flaws and meet people and show them, hey, you know, I have these flaws too, it's relatable. People can relate to that and you build rapport with them. And then like, man, he... He 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 gets to say he went through the same thing I did, or she 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 understands me, you know. So that's the key. You want to introduce your character flaws, and the fourth component or the fourth uh, trait of of elements is you're building your polarity. All right, and none other better. No one does it better than this guy. <laughs> well, I, I don't care what your uh, political stance is, or y- you either love this guy or you hate him. Uh, either way, and I, that's neither here or there. But one thing's for sure. This dude is a master at being polarizing. And you can't be afraid to piss people off. Uh, yeah, he pissed off a lot of people. A lot of people hate his guts. But also there's a lot of people that love him. But at the same time, even the people that hated him and the people that love him, it doesn't matter. Half the people love him, half the people hate him. All of the eyeballs are on him. And that's how he won the election, by being polarizing, doing stuff crazy. They, 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 he was so unorthodox with it. So being polar, speaking your beliefs... Um, is very powerful when you're building your attractive character. All right, so let's move on to uh, the identity. You know, so certain types of identities here. You, we we got the leader. You know, and then the uh, the leader is someone that's probably um, been through uh, the the same thing that that your your audience has, and that you're taking the lead and you're showing them that uh, how to how to do things and how to avoid the same mistakes that. Uh, you made along the process. Gary Vaynerchuk comes to mind right away. The guy uh, is a natural leader. He's out there making his daily V videos every day uh, and and helping people avoid the same mistakes that he's learned on his entrepreneurial journey. Um, that's a, a good identity to choose. That's also what I choose with my underdog brand identity. Um, and then the Venture Crusader. That's like, you know, you don't, yeah, it's like saying, I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to go out and I'm going to find them and I'm going to take us there and I'm going to take you on this adventure with me and we're going to find that. And a guy that reminds me of that is Pat Flynn with Smart Passive Income Podcast. He, uh, he, he, he plays multiple roles, but he, he does a lot of that where he doesn't always have the answers, but he does like case studies and, and goes and finds things out and shares it with his audience and updates his email list constantly. If you're not on his email list, I'd uh, recommend getting on there. He's always dropping bombs on there. Um, and then the the reporter evangelist, um, that's like this guy. You know, you're you're always interviewing these rock stars. You're you're placing yourself uh, as a reporter that you're g- gathering this information and sharing it with your audience, and you're putting your face up to all these other rock stars in your industry, and that positions you as a credible source of information and support. That's a really good role to play. I play that role myself as well as with my podcast. I'm always interviewing rock star interview uh, people on on my uh, interviewing rock star entrepreneurs on my podcast, which positions me and my brand very well. Uh, it's a great way to, to go, especially when you're first starting out as the reporter and evangelist. And then you got the reluctant hero on the fourth one. Uh, the person that plays that perfectly is Russell Brunson, the guy that I actually learned this uh, whole attractive character model from. It's more so of the, you know, I don't want to have the spotlight. I don't want to get out in their lead, but I, I feel called upon to do this, to share with my audience, to teach them and, and to guide them in the right way. So I'm going to step up and be the, the, um, the reluctant hero. Now, you can move to new identities as you progress through your career, or you can combine multiple ones at the same time. Like me, for instance, I currently combine the leader, number one, and the third, the reporter evangelist, 
and it works out amazing. I've also done the Adventure Crusader where when I was first starting out, when I didn't have any credibility or when I was like, hey, I don't have all the answers. I just came out of prison and stuff. You know, I don't have a trek record, but I'm going to go out and show the world that I'm not scared. And I'm going to bring my audience of underdogs with me and show them. Uh, and I still play that role because I don't always have all the answers. You know what I'm saying? There's a, there's a character flaw right there that I'm showing you with. Uh, so, yeah, you can combine these in, 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 you, in multiple ways, and you can move on to the next one at different phases of your career. You can always move it out, but you always want to have an identity in place um, that you know that you're presenting whenever you're, uh, whenever you're making any type of your content or, or teaching your audience anything. Um, now, let's move into the third and final component, which is storylines. So, so you have loss and redemption and that is, um, you know, like, hey, I, like, I use that story of loss and redemption, where I share my story of, I, you know, I went, I had a, a, a good life growing up. Uh, you know, we grew up in Ferguson, Missouri. Um, you know, I had a great mom that raised me. You know, yeah, I went through some trials and tribulations all throughout my life of uh, being locked up from age nine all the way up until uh, becoming an adult in and out of boys' homes and ju uh, juvenile institutions. But I had a loving mom. And then, you know, I just lost my passion, my, my chief aim in life and got involved with drugs after I caught some cases. And then I went heavy into drugs. And then I went and did prison. I lost some redemption. And now I'm, I'm out. And I've been out for years now. And I've been rising and and, and doing doing things and leading leading uh, the underdog entrepreneur movement like that's a loss and redemption story right there. Then you have the us versus them, and I love using this. And how I use it is like for an example, you know, I'm speaking in parables here. Uh, the us versus them, like underdog entrepreneurs. You know, we we have all these dreams and this ambition, and we're gritty and scrappy, but we don't have all the resources. And we got all these people that are laughing at us for uh, for dreaming it, for daring to dream big, and for going out and trying to build our businesses. And we, it doesn't matter what they say, and they say that we, we can't have it because we're going to come and we're going to prove them wrong. Like that's a, a good us versus them story. And then the third is the before and after. Like I, I share that as well. Like that, that works amazing. Like if you're... um. A personal trainer, you know, you can talk about the before and afters, you know, the transformation that you made. You, you, you're wanting to show the transformation. I share the transformation of before, was had no hope, was down in the dumps, drug addict, spent over five years of my life in prison, and now I got out. I, I missed the birth of my twin boys, and that's what changed everything for me. That was the transformation, and then I came home with all the odds stacked against me, and, uh, you know, n nobody believed in me and, and thought it was going to happen, and I went out and proved them wrong. Like, that's a, a good before and after transformation story. And then fourth, you got the amazing discovery. This is also a very good one. So the amazing discovery is like, you know, wow, I used to think this about, um, about, you know, building an attractive character. I thought you just, you know, had to get out there and just, just say who you were and not really share your character flaws. But then I watched this YouTube video where, uh, Zach was teaching this amazing stuff that he learned from the dot com secrets book. And he taught me about, you know, sharing my character flaws, how that builds rapport people and how you speak in parables. And it, when you're, t when you're teaching a concept and you tell a story or speak in parables, it, te it, it ties the, uh, the concept together and makes it stick or being polar like Donald Trump. And, and, and when I started sharing this and, and I found my identity and, and started using these storylines, with the amazing discovery, I started noticing that my engagement went up and I started making more sales and people were responding to my emails. That's a, a good, amazing discovery storyline. And then number five is secret telling. Like, uh, th this is always really good, especially for like headlines and stuff. Like, you know, you want to keep like, keep, like hey, you know, I, I, I didn't really want to tell anybody this. It's something really cool that, that, uh, that I got going on, but you know, this is something that you have to keep it you know, between you and I. And of course, what do people do when they hear that? They go and tell the whole entire world. <laughs> so it's also, uh, they also, by telling them your secrets, so they, and stuff, you're letting them in and people want to know your secrets. They, they, they're curious and, and, uh, they're, they're, they feel, um, like they're a part of, uh, something special, like they're an exclusive group and people like being a part of that stuff. That's a great marketing tactic that all, a lot of businesses use. Uh, exclusive VIP, you know, special, you know, um, all inclusive seats, you know, stuff like that. And then uh, the sixth and final storyline would be a uh, third person testimonial. And this is one of the most powerful ones, uh, in my opinion, and many marketers would agree, is by using the actual testimonials that your customers and clients 
give you and tell you about. And then telling a story in the third person, talking about their transformation that they had with your product or service is amazing way to uh, really get people interested in what you have going on and really show proof, uh, social proof that what you have is of value. So that's how you build out the attractive character. All right. Now, let me know if that was helpful in the comments below. If, let me know what you, what was the biggest takeaway that you got from that on how to build an attractive character. And if it sucked, let me know. Let, tell me in the comments below why it sucked and what I could do to get better. Or just if you just want to just tell me it sucked, <laughs> just let me know so I know I, I can get better in the future. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, if it was valuable to you. And if it sucked, give me a thumbs down. I'd like to hear that as well, get that feedback. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, Channel and you're looking for the best tips on how to turbocharge your business with lead generation and customer acquisition, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell notifications. That way you don't miss anything. I'm going to go for now, but until next time, you can check out some of these videos that I'm getting right throw at you right now. We put them hours in to bring them dollars in. Uh -oh. It's that underdog empowerment. We put them hours in to bring them dollars in. Uh -oh. My name is Zachary Bell.